Welcome viewers to E Patasala, the lecture course on GIS for postgraduate students of architecture. We were discussing about the structures in GIS data structures and I was telling you about the raster data structures. One of the finest and the best is your run length coding. Let us see the details of run length coding of raster data structuring. One of the earliest and simplest methods of this particular data compression and it is a very effective one. What does it do? A repeated string of characters is replaced by 2 bytes. So, naturally if that particular number of character appears more and more the character itself is taken into consideration and it is replaced. Two dimensional coding is done the first line is coded using the id scheme the next k lines are coded using the first line obviously depending upon the size or the the size of k or the number of k lines will be depending upon the application type what excel you are using for if you look at the rle example for a vector map you can see the smoothness of this particular vector map the same thing when I am using in raster this becomes coarser. This how do you avoid, how do you improve the smoothness? Obviously, when I divide this into further n number of cells that is refining the resolution of the cell obviously, the map also will get smoothened. To attain this we can smoothen this. Well, how do you represent this object? So, do not worry about or brood about this particular aspect that can be improved. How do you compress the data? How do you represent this particular data using RLE? As you can see here, this is what is the table which is being generated. The entire first row is not there, second row no values, the third row up to the sixth of course, it is not uh, yeah, up to 6 that is 0. Afterwards, the red one is indicative of red uh, 1 that is your object or theme 1, 1 1 followed by 4 2s, then the second row, the fourth row, fifth row, and so on and so forth. So, you find that each of them has got a value. In the case of your vector data, these attributes were stored separately and it was retrieved whenever is required. Similarly, here in this case it can be retrieved and its x y location is much easier because we know the x y or the origin of this. If this is referred to say you are lat long or easting and northing as I told you it could be here or it could be here or it could be the center origin point. How is the value stored in a say or how it is coded? You can see here 1 to 16 it is 0, second row 1 to 16 is 0, third row 1 to 6 is 0, 7 and 8 is 1, 9 to 12 is 2, 13 to 16 is again 0 and so on so forth. Here the chin small drawback is that even if you have just 2 cells here you will have to mention because you cannot have from 2 here because 2 cells you can have 7 to 8 you cannot say whereas 9 to 12, 13 to 16 even if it is more than 2 you can say 6 to 8. So, little redundancy will be there, but still it is very effective. So, this is the value this is the way the run length code encoding is being done and the entire map whatever is required is stored here and at the time of retrieval it becomes much easier for the computer. 1 to 16 it gives a blank value because it is only cell value just picks, pick from the hard disk and then 7 and 8 it just gives the value of 1 1, 9 to 12 it gives a value of 2 and so on and so forth. So, the retrieval is all is much convenient here. If it is for a single layer you can see here if I am using the same method that is your uh, some full matrix without compression what will happen and the same thing when I am using the run length code 
of course, I, I did not want to go to the details because I already explained you. You can see the bytes. In the case of a full matrix, it is 162 bytes of data and in the case of a run length encoding, it is only 44 or almost one fourth. And obviously, you should remember this is a lossless compression and uh, uh, normally most of the other things will be lossy compression. So, it is opposed to your lossy since the original data can, can be exactly reproduced in this case. We have raster chain coding based on the direction of the data or the movement a little tricky, but it's not very tricky. I will just explain you how it is done. As you know that everything is nothing but a array of grid cells. How do you code the data? How do you store the data? Or any given value, if you just pick a particular value, that particular uh, um, map may be containing four different uh, objects, numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. You can start make a beginning somewhere and then start making the system to understand what is present where based on the direction part. Let us see that. The starting point here is the origin here and it says this is not considered. From this point, this particular value 4 which has been considered in this map, you will have to describe the direction in which it is moving or it is disposed rather. 4, this is the value with respect to this, it goes to the north 1 cell, again east 1 cell. You, you cannot go like this because if you go like this, you cannot come back. So, you will have to cover the entire area, is not it? See how excellently they have devised this. Go to the maximum on the north side. If nothing is there, you could have gone like this because you have a north one. With respect to cell, this cell, there are two north. With respect to this cell, there are two on the eastern part. With respect to this cell, there are three on the southern part. With respect to this, there are about 3 and the western part. So, the entire area is covered. You do not have to worry about all the things intervening here because it is when it just takes a round, the entire thing is considered and this is also included. So, this is how your run chain code, chain like structure, it goes like this, goes like this, goes like this and comes back. So, obviously, when this is there, all this, I mean, if it is a very small uh, uh, grid, if you have a larger grid, you will understand that. So, you can all automatically have that, but of course, in the other cases when you have small small areas like this, if it consider this it is again you see how what happens one this cell its location to the north same value that is all it is over, it is only one cell only its cell location will be there. Sometimes when you have different features in the same map this is a little difficult one to express. The same context it is block coding, it is another otherwise your two dimensional run length encoding, wherein which uh, the block coding part of it, this is how it is done. Here block here is nothing but a square block. So, this is one block, is not it? Unfortunately, this is only one cell. So, this is only one separate block, this is another separate block and this will form one block, this will form one block. So, here you see how it is shown block coding. That means, any number of square grids can be there within this one, that is your block coding. There is another set of models which are not directly related, but still are very important in terms of coding. It could be based on your row or it could be cells like you can see that. This is a simple row model, starts from here, goes like this. Obviously, when I go here, I am not going to come like this. That is a row prime, you can see the difference 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I will have to again come back to here. So, this is the row technique. It goes like this, goes like this, goes like this. The same technique, instead of using this method, if I am going to use the method of prime, goes like this, instead of coming back to the 1 here it just dumps to the last cell of the second row. So, in this context, it is only going to be row by row. In this context, it will be row by the row, but taking the 
last cell as the first. So, it goes like this. Its first cell will become the first cell here, it goes like this. So, this is the way the row prime moves around. Then another interesting aspect is your how are you going to consider the blocks. So, when I have 3, 6, 8 by 8, this is divided into n number of square cell set of grids, 4 of them, then the 4 of them, 4 of them. So, for this 4, this will be the coding. So, it is covering all the 4. For this 4, this will be the covering. So, this is how it is taken, that is called as Piano Hilbert method. So, orders of two dimensional data. So, ultimate aim is to close in the all the physical space on the close on the disk part of it. Here there is a modern method, a very interesting method again. Instead of going so the same method, as you, this is a prime method, this is your this uh, row method. So, goes like this, goes like this, finished. This block is complete. Then the second block goes like this. So, here it does not jump to this side, it goes to this place, it covers these four. So, on so forth, you can see here, because these are all uh, mathematical way of doing it, but still uh, very important for us to know, at least to know how it is being stored. Quad tree, one of the popular one and uh, this is uh, one which is being used uh, very much in almost all the types of uh, data storage. Quad tree, quadrant and tree like structure dividing the area entirely into various quadrants namely the four quadrants of the earth like how you represent the earth surface northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. So, these are the four quadrants that take tree like structure in each of the quadrants you can calculate and make in such a way that it will follow a specific pattern we will see that in detail. It is a hierarchical database structure and based on the concept of recursive decomposition of space. How to recursive? You can see this here. It is as I told you, it is divided into subdivides a grid into four quadrants northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. That is the way in which it is divided. And you can see that that data structure the entire A that is your object A is covering this entire north west. In southwest you have part covered by B, part covered by A. So, obviously, I cannot consider this as a single object. Hence, I divide this into four quadrants. When I divide this into four quadrants, I know that this particular quadrant will fall into A, this into A. So, obviously, what I have to do, I cannot just like that take the entire as in the case of northwest, I cannot take this into consider. I will have to be very sure which part of the uh, a map is falling in this one, I mean which part of this particular quadrant is falling in which quadrant. So, if I can identify that, it becomes much easier. You can see here, this is how it is done. Obviously, when I come to this particular grid, namely your south east. I have four quadrants. Fortunately, this is C entirely. This is partly C and partly your B. So, what I what I will have to do is I will have to further divide it into a number of quadrants, saying that this will be one. So, this is how it goes. See, entire thing is one, does not matter. So, what I will do, I will consider this one that is northwest and then uh, southwest and the southeast as one content and this will be different and further divide into 1. If these 3 are same, no problem, I can just consider it as a 1 unit. So, division, subdivision, this part is separate, again subdivided, subdivided and a tree like structure continuously changing over time will be considered here. As I was telling you, the root node corresponds to the entire grid. So, this is the root node and obviously, the leaf nodes that is all the other nodes. So, how they have uh, mentioned it. It identifies the attribute values and the quadrants which has to be further divided or sub, so the subdivided. 
obviously the intermediate nodes correspond to quadrants that are further subdivided time and again. So, it will without any further subdivision a part can be done as we have seen in the previous case also here or you can also see here this does not require any subdivision, but what this requires subdivision. So, that is so. So, this will be the root node for this context the entire A first one is your northwest entire full in north east see how many divisions are there and that again is further that is what I told you that again is further divided into northwest, southwest, northeast and southeast and here you see here how many cells this northwest is further divided into four of them. So, this is what is your leaf or intermediate nodes which are to be represented. So, very very complicated, but still very effective and then the storage becomes much easier when you follow this technique. So, other when you are working the same raster data for say multiple layers what happens, how do you work on that? Let us see that for multiple layers satellite data one good example of your multiple layers is that every satellite will have n number of sensors. Each sensor will be acquiring information about the earth surface in various bands. Sometimes it could be just one band like a panchromatic band or it could be multi spectral band 3 or 4 bands will be there or it could be a thematic mapper in the case of Landsat satellite where it could be 7 or 8 or it could be hyperspectral where the bands would be 64 a minimum of. So, when you are trying to think in those lines just imagine what should be the total quantum of data which has to be stored or which has to be received by the receiving station on the ground surface which are being normally transmitted by the satellites. So, what is that you require here is that you should have a some method of storing the data. I think you, if you remember we were discussing in the case of a sat remote sensing that uh, the entire earth is perceived and it is divided into n number of cells in terms of your remote sensing. It is not physically you do not do that. A sensor will consist of an array of grid cells and each of them will be having a resolution of 5 meters, 23 meters, 20 meters depending upon the resolution of that particular sensor and it will be capable of acquiring information only for that particular cell size. Again, advantage is it is that when I have multi spectral for the same cell I will get 4 different values. It is a very very complicated process millions and billions and trillions of data will be uh, transmitted to the earth once it is uh, in contact with your transmission this receiving station. Well, what kind of satellite data how satellite data is normally stored? We have 3 methods BSQ band sequential BIP band interleaved by pixel BIL band interleaved by line data. So, let us see what exactly they mean. As you all know that it is all in any kind of data can be stored in the form of say elevation data, rainfall data, temperature data or spectral channels of your remote sense data. You have to organize that into a one dimensional data because computer has to store the data and process the data. Band sequential, if I have four different bands in satellite each and every band is sequentially stored that is this is the total area. I presume that there are four cells here each of the cells will be receiving for one particular band of that particular sensor. If I have 4 bands of the same sensor for the same area I will get 4 different types of data that means 4 into 4 16 data. So, I can store that band by band that is called as band sequential that is 4 data of band 1 followed by 4 data of band 2 followed by 4 band end of band 3 and so on so forth. Whereas, when you talk about band interleaved by pixel what how the storage is done you see this is the first pixel of the first band comma first pixel of the second band first pixel of the third band 
and first pixel of the fourth band. Then it goes to the second pixel of the first band, second of the second band, second of the third band and so on and so forth. You see how excellently they are doing the storage. So, this will be your band interleaved by pixel. It is band interleaved by line what does it simple same thing. This line it may be 100,000 1 million data this line the first line of your first band, first line of the second band, first line of the third band and the fourth band, second line of the first band, second band, third band, fourth band. So, band interleaved by line. So, BSQ, BIP they we normally call the BSQ, BIP and the BILK format. This is how the satellite data for remote in remote sensing is being stored one of the very very tough method of storing the raster data. A simple example of raster data how the sea some surface temperature is being represented here. Of course, you can see here you have uh, both the raster data and as well as vector data can you visualize that these are the lines indicative of your boundary of each and every country and the continent. Of course, internal also you have small small country details here various countries in the African the South American. So, you find here the values are shown like this you have a vector layer indicating the boundaries. Of course, this can also be provided by a raster provided increase the cell size because represent the entire world it is very difficult to have very fine resolution it will go into trillions and trillions of data. Of course, the significance here is that how the sea surface temperature SST we call it as. The sea surface temperature it has it is a must for most of the things which are happening on the sea rather. SST or sea surface temperature is important for fishing purpose of course, it will not be directly relevant having started this I thought I could just tell you about a little about that. Invariably fish has got a, a, a specific uh, attitude to go for higher temperatures it will go and reside at relatively warmer places rather than the cooler places. So, this satellite which will have what is called as thermal infrared sensors which will be capturing the data pertaining to the sea surface temperature. So, whatever is present in that area whatever is the total temperature or whatever is that it will try to acquire the temperatures of each and every cell and we will be in a position to map that based on the temp variation in the temperature. See the indirect impact when I am able to map the sea surface temperature we presume that or we know that invariably fish will be moving towards of towards high temperature re relatively warm temperature not exactly and in other words because of the presence of the fish at a given place the temperature might also become little higher it may become little warmer. So, that is an indicator for a remote sensing scientist especially fishery experts to say that where fish catch is available and this is being always announced over various media for the public to know or the fishermen to know where exactly fish might be available. Of course, I do not deny that fishermen are the best judges to know where the fish is available, but this method will help you to locate or find out where fish is available aplenty. So, that is the reason we use what is called as sea surface temperature. Now, coming back to your raster image you can see here. So, this is all you know that along the equator you can see how bright it is you can see India as all of you know that. So, this is how it will be there and here the temperatures will be high as you go further and further it becomes much lesser and again little away it will become more and then again it will become less when you go to the poles part of it. So, how the representation is taking place in a raster. So, representing sea surface temperature for entire area using your raster analogy of course, all others are all your indicative of your boundaries which are there and of course, values also there 4.75 and this is the lowest lower temperature and this is when you are going away from the earth. So, when you close to the equator you will have around 30 degrees 
26.5, 23.5, 28.4, so on and so forth, around 30 degrees the closer to that. And obviously, you can see that it will all be red in color indicating very, very, very high temperatures. When you go away from that, it will become pleasant in nature, it will become much lesser and here it will become much, much lesser because this is a rotation part, this should go to the top. There are certain synonyms for raster data, we otherwise call it as surface data nothing but your contour data and the DM data, grid data that is what we normally use in your arc info raster type, image a generic model which is normally related to satellite data I told you earlier. An image which may be dot IMG is the extension normally we use it for raster data in your Erdas imaging software, a software which is exclusively used for image processing. You can enhance the data you can suppress the data, you can manipulate the data, you can classify the data, one of the most efficient software as far as your image processing is concerned. An array which is more of a technical term which is associated with your computers how the raster data is managed. Matrix which is rarely used because of its association with mathematics, but it does occasionally come up in your raster data. The third data structure in GIS that is to represent say surfaces. So, let us see to what extent uh, this particular uh, third type of data structure triangulated irregular network or TIN type of data structures, what will be the effect or influence of this data structure in creating a DEM namely the digital elevation models a very very important uh, way of representing surfaces as I was telling you any variation on the earth surface in the form of a third dimension it is represented by contours as a two dimension in a topographic sheet. But uh, with the advent of your computers improvement in representing the data improvement in forming a, a kind of a three dimensional analogy in GIS it becomes much easier using DEMs. These digital elevation models are again obtained from various methods and it is stored as a DEM and in fact fortunately DEMs are available for the entire world, freely available for the entire world a very coarse method a 30 meter resolution or a 90 meter resolution do not get carried away with that resolution is nothing to do with the altitude aspects, it is the distance between one cell to another cell. For every 30 meters they have given, then the, for every 90 meters they have given. So, a 90 meter uh, SRTM or your uh, 90 meter Aster data or all your grids which are available or your DMs are available on the internet, anytime anybody can automatically download the data and work on that. So, let us see the details of your DEM, how it is generated, how it works and how, what are the benefits and the advantages. Okay. So, all these details let us see in the next episode. Thank you.